God is looking for men with legendary grit. Do you want to be known as a legendary man of God? If so, then return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear as we examine the lives of 10 men who understood what it takes to become a living legend. It takes legendary grit. From these men's lives, we not only see shining examples of legendary men, but we also see models we can follow to develop grit in our own lives. So saddle up. It's time to become the man God created you to be, a man of legendary grit. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor Conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mentor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here, the Mentor Guy. I'm so happy that you decided to join us this week. Well, guys, we recently wrapped up our spring mentors for 2023. We had an amazing year at conferences. God moved so mightily among the men. It was obviously one of our best years we've ever had over the past 10 years doing these conferences. And God's power and presence was just so strong at every event this year. And today I want to bring to you the message that was shared by Pastor Scott Kramer at our Northeast PA Mentor. It was such a powerful challenge from Scott. The men really responded. We had 12 men accept Christ at the altar that day. So many more just came to the altar. Men started going to the altar before Scott even had the altar call. The Spirit of God was just so strong there. Never seen that in all the years I've done Mentor. So I want to bring that message to you and give you a chance to hear it today. So enjoy this word from Scott. Well, good morning, man. Man, I'm so glad to be with you today. Um, excited to have this moment with you. I really believe in, as Jamie said, I didn't know I, I was the um, most frequent speaker at these events, but I really do believe in, in these events. I believe in them because I believe that when you step out of your normal routine in life, you position yourself uniquely to hear something from God. And I don't believe that, that you pulled yourself out of bed this morning, whatever time it was, on a Saturday morning to come to a men's event just to go through the motions. I believe that you are here by divine appointment and that God has something to release into your life today. In fact, I want you to stand one more time. You're going to sit for a little bit while I share the word, but I want you to stand. And this is a sign of you starting, beginning to have a posture of receptivity before the Lord today. You know, and I, I want to kind of set the tone for the whole day, not just what happens for the next 30 minutes in this room, but wherever it is that you go in this building for the other sessions, I want to challenge you to lean in to something and whatever it is that God wants to say to you today. In fact, I want you to, this is a phrase I want to give you, I want you to listen today with a strong bias to receive something from God. And not just something, right? Like you can, you can receive something from God and that's great. But I want you to, to kind of have this idea of faith, this, this level of expectation that not only will God release something into your life, but for some of you, I believe that God wants to release something very specific in your life today. So specific that the trajectory of your life after this day could never be the same again. I heard Mark Batterson say years ago, a change of pace and a change of place equals a change of perspective. And I'm believing that God will use the, the next couple of hours in this building, on this campus, to shift something for some of you. You know, maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe, maybe you fought with your wife yesterday. And you, you're, the first thing that God's going to stir in you today is that you're going to go home and apologize to your spouse. Maybe there's a, a career decision that you're facing. Maybe there's some, some uh, besetting sin or habit that you have that God wants to break in your life today. I'm believing that this day, April 22nd, 2023, some of you will look back on this day and say, that was the day that God set me free, that God brought a breakthrough, and that God released something supernatural in my life. Will you believe with me for that, gentlemen? Put your hands out like this. Let's pray. Father, today in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you would begin to release your supernatural on these men's lives. On a Saturday morning at Harvest Church, God, I'm asking you to open heaven over this building, 
to release your word into their lives, to release your, your work into their lives. God, I believe, God, that you would not bring us out to this place if you didn't have something to say or something to do in our lives on this morning. So I ask you, God, to posture our hearts in a, in a place of receptivity, in an atmosphere of expectancy, God, believing that you are about to do something and to speak something into our heart, hearts. God, something very specific for even one guy here today. Release it now, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's men said, amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated in this place. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump in on this theme of legendary that, that Jamie has uh, set the tone for this whole uh, series of man tour events this whole year. Um, and I'm going to talk about legendary faith today. What does it mean to have legendary faith? Uh, that's, a, that's a big word. That's, a, that's a, a high and lofty goal for our lives. But I believe that uh, it is possible, and I believe that God wants to do that in our lives. Let me ask you this, or let me answer the question. What makes something legendary? Maybe think about that for a second. What is it that makes something legendary? Here are a couple thoughts. If it's legendary, it has grown to feel bigger than life. When something is legendary, it's bigger than, it feels bigger than life itself. It has an impact that exceeds its momentary effect. If something becomes legendary, its impact far outlives its own immediate lifespan. Here's some examples of legendary people over the course of history. You might know some of these names. Uh, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, Cleopatra, Abraham Lincoln, Mother Teresa, Albert Einstein, Walt Disney, Henry Ford, Elvis Presley, Martin Luther King, Jackie Robinson. In keeping with the theme of the, the great, the, the old west, Wyatt Earp. Anybody see the movie Wyatt Earp? How about Tombstone? Come on, that was a good movie right there. Uh, Wyatt Earp, Billy the Kid, Doc Holliday, Jesse James. Those are some legendary names from the wild, wild west. How about some, some biblical names of, of legendary people in the word of God? Moses, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, King David, Daniel, John the Baptist, the Apostle Paul, and of course, Jesus the Messiah. How about some legendary quotes? Are there quotes that you can think of that have outlived their life, their lifetime? Throw out a quote that you can think of. What was it? Follow me. Follow me. Yeah, that's from Jesus himself. Yep. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Y'all are so spiritual. Oh my goodness. Come on right there. Make my day. How about I'll be back? Some of you aren't old enough to get that one. Here's some legendary quotes. Uh, it ain't over till it's over. Who said that? Anybody know? Yogi Berra, right. There's nothing to fear except fear itself. FDR, 1933. Ask not what your, your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. That's JFK, 1961. I have a dream. Martin Luther King, right? 1963. You, you may not know this one. I think it's good, though. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. No, Wayne Gretzky. This is a classic. Some of you will know this. Do or do not. There is no try. Yoda. The Empire Strikes Back. 1980. Classic. Maybe some of you know this one. I am inevitable. Yes! Come on, who said that? Yes, Thanos from Endgame. Anybody Marvel fans except for me? All right, I'm with some friends today. Come on, that's good. And then one more so I can be spiritual like the rest of you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Legendary statement by Jesus, the Son of God. These are legendary people, legendary statements, things that outlive their own lifetime. I want to talk with you about legendary faith. And I, when I saw this, uh, this topic that Jamie gave some of us as speakers a while ago, I was like, well, God... Do you give any examples? Are there any examples furnished in the Word of God that, that show us what it looks like to have legendary faith? And I searched the Word. Something came to my mind. And I'm like, yeah, I think there are. 
And I want to look at one of those examples today, what it means to have legendary faith. And I think it's something that every single one of us in this room can aspire towards. Because you think of some of the names, some of the quotes, you're like, well, I'm not going to be that. I can't be like those people. So what's in it for me? I believe that every single one of us can live a life that at some point outlives our own lifespan. And having legendary faith is one of the things that will help us do that. So there's, the, there's a man named the centurion. He, we don't even know his name, but he's a centurion. He's a Roman soldier over, over many soldiers. And there's a story in Luke chapter 7 that Luke gives us about the centurion whose faith was commended by Jesus himself. And this is how it goes. It said this, when Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening. I love that, that little aside there. Luke says, when Jesus finished saying these things to those who were listening, because in, in any given crowd, you may have those who were listening and those who were daydreaming, right? I'm hoping that every one of you is listening to what God wants to say to you today. He answered Capernaum, there a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man, this is what the, the, the friends of this centurion came to Jesus and they said these words. This man, referring to the centurion, deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So this is a man that he wasn't a Jew by birth, but he had invested in the Jewish religion. He had built a synagogue and he was a man of faith. So his friends come to Jesus and say, his servant is, is sick and this man deserves for you to do this. So Jesus went with them. Something inspired these men to go. I think it was the man's faith. It says this, he was not far from the house, speaking of Jesus, when the centurion sent other friends to him to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word. I want you to kind of just make a little like bookmark in those four words in your brain today. But say the word. The centurion, not even feeling himself worthy to go to Jesus himself, has this kind of faith. He's like, you know what? I don't even need to go to Jesus. I don't feel worthy. I'm a centurion. I'm a Roman. Jesus is a rabbi. He's a Jew. But I've heard he does great things. So I'm not going to go to him. I'll send my servants. And I'm going to ask them to say to him, just release a word over me. Just say the word, it says. And my servant will be healed. Notice it doesn't say he might be healed. He could be healed. The centurion says, but say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a, am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go and he goes and that one come and he comes. So I say to my servant, do this and he does it. This is where the story kind of reaches its pinnacle. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. He was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Incredible story, and I think it furnishes for us an example in the Bible of somebody who had what I would call legendary faith. There aren't many times in the Gospels where you see the Son of God complimenting or commending someone for their faith or really someone for anything. There's not many times you scour the, the Gospels, you'll only find a few instances where Jesus gave someone such a high mark or grade in their life. Very rare. So what is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is believing what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. Faith can be described this way. Having a confident expectation of that which is to come. Faith is believing for what God will and can do in our lives someday. And I want to share with you a couple of things that I believe legendary faith can have an impact in our lives. Here's the first one. Legendary faith 
has a high view of Jesus' power and authority. Legendary faith has a high view of Jesus' power and authority. Let me come back to that forward phrase. You have a centurion, this, this leader of Roman soldiers. He leads a hundred soldiers. That's the word sent, centurion comes from. He has command over a hundred soldiers. This is a man who understands rank and file. He understands authority and power. And he says to Jesus, just say the word. Just release the word. This centurion, the reason he had legendary faith is he has a high view of Jesus' power and authority in this world. Where do we see the power of Jesus' word? Well, I go back to Hebrews 11. This is what it says about about God. In Hebrews 11, 3, by faith, here it is again, by faith, what is faith? A confident expectation of that which is to come. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. But say the word. Just say the word. Just say the word. God, speak a word over my life today. God, release a word over my family today. Release a word over my my wayward children today. God, release a word over my broken marriage today. God, would you speak a word over the, the, the addiction I've been battling with? Just say the word. The centurion says, God, to Jesus, just say the word. Hebrews says that God's command, listen to this, the universe was formed from that which didn't even exist. And I'll, I'll read it specifically. It says, it was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The very universe itself came into being when God said the word. Somebody say amen to that. Come on, man. When God released the word, God was before time. He sits outside of time. The Bible describes God as being transcendent, above and outside of space and time. And before time even began to tick on the clock, before time began, the Bible says, at God's command, the universe was formed out of something that was invisible. You know, when when God released his word over nothingness, You know, when God made the universe, he didn't work with pre-existing material. God spoke, he released his breath over nothing and into existence came flying 100 billion trillion stars. 100 billion trillion stars at the breath of his mouth. Man, Man, I don't know that we have a high enough view of God's power. Do we understand what God can do just by releasing his word? A hundred billion trillions. That's a really abstract number. Let me, let me help you understand the number. If you could add up all the grains of sand on every beach on earth, at every seashore on earth, and at every desert on earth, take the Sahara Desert, take all the deserts, all the beachfronts, and all the ocean floors, for every grain of sand on planet earth, there are 10,000 stars in the universe. That's the ratio, man. 10,000 stars for every single grain of sand on planet earth. And sometimes we doubt God's power. But say the word, he said to Jesus. Just release your word over my life today. Release it, God. And he will be healed. That's what Luke says. That's what the man sent these men. I'm not even worthy to come to you. But I'll send my servants and they're going to give you what I'm asking. Just say the word and my servant will be well. Number two, so legendary faith has a high view of Jesus' power and authority. Number two, legendary faith tends to be unwavering. Legendary, legendary faith has a tenacity to it. And I believe, this is why I believe in these events and I've been coming to these events for 10 years and I'll continue to come to them as long as Jamie has them. I believe that at at moments like this, not only can you have a moment, I believe that you can have a legendary moment. I believe that 
God can provide for you on this morning, whether it's in this room in a breakout session, God can say the word over your life today and provide for you a moment, just a moment in time from this day that will outlive the momentary time that you spend in this building. Let me give you an example. So about 20 years ago, my wife and I were in New York City. I was at the time working for Lucent Technologies. I was in engineering. I'd gone to school for biology and pre-med. I was five years working at Lucent. And on December 1st, that's why, and again, maybe this won't mean anything to all but one of you, but I, I called out the date earlier for a reason. I prayed this date over you for a specific reason. April 22nd, 2023, because I'm believing for at least one of you in this room, this date will stand in infamy in your life. Amen. Because on December 1st, 2002, almost 21 years ago, I sat in the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church with my wife, Kate, before we had kids. I sat in the room in the, the big old theater in Brooklyn. We sat about 12th row in, middle right section. And on that Sunday morning, December 1st, 2002, the God of this universe, the living God, spoke an unmistakable word to our hearts that day. Now, I was very content in my life. I was living a life. I was in engineering. I was, had worked at Lucent for five years. I made a good income. We were, we were very content. My wife is a school teacher. We were, we were ready to have a family, just married for a couple of years. Like, man, life is good. I was volunteering in the local church, but I was, I was very content with my life. And on December 1st, 2022, the God of this universe whispered a word to our heart. I remember there was, this, there was this short preacher from Texas at Brooklyn that day. It wasn't Jim Cimbalo, the lead pastor. They had this really rammy kind of spitfire preacher from Texas. And he was, he was saying over the room that day, he was preaching this word, and he said this word. I grew up in church, okay? I'm, I, am, I serve my church. I'm serving in the church where I grew up. I've been at my church for 43 years. And I've been in church a lot. Sunday morning, when I grew up, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, I've been to a lot of church services. I've heard a lot of preachers say a lot of things over the year, years. But that Sunday morning on December 1st, 2022, that preacher said from that pulpit in Brooklyn Tabernacle, he said, somebody in this room is being called to full-time ministry. Now, I'd heard that many times before. I'd sat through many church services. I've heard pastors, evangelists, missionaries say lots of things from the stage. But on that Sunday morning, 2022, God spoke it to our hearts. My wife and I, gripping each other's hands with white knuckles, sitting 12th row in on, in the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Again, what did I say? A change of pace, a change of place is a change of perspective. We sat in a church that wasn't our home, we sat in a rhythm that wasn't our own. And on that Sunday morning, out of our pace and out of our place, the living God whispered a word to our hearts. It wasn't the audible voice of God, but I can tell you this, men. It was an unmistakable voice of God. The God of this universe, by the power of his Holy Spirit, said to my wife, Kate, and I, he said these words. He said, he's talking to you. That's what we heard. We heard God saying, it's you. It's you, it's you. And I wonder in this room, if you're sitting here today and you feel the, the weight of the Holy Spirit on your soul right now. And the Spirit of God is whispering something to your soul. And he's saying, it's you today. I've got something for you. I'm gonna release something in your life. I'm gonna release something into your marriage. I'm gonna heal your body today. I'm gonna renew and transform your mind on this Saturday morning. Just like God spoke to my wife, Kate, and I 21 years ago, I believe that God wants to say something to some of you here today. And I, I believe he wants to, to take that word that he speaks and cause it to become an anchor for the rest of your life. I can tell you this, and some of the pastors, some of my friends in this room would tell you the same thing. If you're called to ministry, the call of God becomes an anchor in your life. You are anchored to the call of God because in Romans chapter 11, Paul says the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. And I can never, I can turn my back on the call, but the call does not turn its back on me. And the call of God will never be reversed and God will never take it back in my life. And I'm believing that God will release something in your life today that will be irrevocable. 
that you look back on this day and say, that was the day that God shifted something in my life, in my soul. He restored my mind. He renewed my thinking. He transformed me on April 22nd, 2023. Legendary faith tends to be unwavering. I've only got 12 more to go, Jamie, wherever you are, so we're gonna wrap it up really soon. Um, just kidding. Legendary faith, this is the last one. I have others, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to an ultra time. Legendary faith moves the heart of God. Legendary faith moves the heart of God. How do I have legendary faith? What do I do? You start with a very, very, very high view of God and his power and in his willingness to move in your life. Because there are some people who, okay, I believe all that. Yeah, I believe in God. And maybe you're here today and you don't, you're not even sure you believe in God. Man, I'm so glad you're here. I believe that God wants to meet you in this place. I believe that God wants to reveal himself to you today. Some of you are veteran believers and yeah, I believe all that. God spoke the universe and all that. But I'm just not sure that he is willing and maybe, maybe the one thing for you today is that the Holy Spirit wants to elevate your belief in God's willingness to move in your life. Not just he can, but he will. And he wants to elevate your understanding of the willingness of our Father in heaven who loves you with an everlasting love, his willingness to move supernaturally in our lives today. Legendary faith moves the heart of God. I want to read to you again verse 9. This verse kind of captures my attention. It, it, it stirs my heart. It says, Luke writes this, when Jesus heard this, what did Jesus hear? He heard the words of the centurion through the servants, just say the word. That's what Jesus heard. Just say the word. Just say the word. When Jesus heard the words of the centurion through his servants, this is what the Bible says. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. How can you amaze the God of this universe? How can you do that? What does amaze mean in this text, this context? It means to marvel or to admire. How can the God of this universe marvel or amaze and, mar and admire anything? What could you do in your life? What could you possibly do to get the attention of the one who spoke a billion trillion stars into existence and have God scratching his head in heaven saying, I can't believe he just did that. Now, we probably do that on a regular basis, but because we're being stupid men, right? Come on, let's be honest. Raise your hand. Like You probably amazed God this week at some point. You probably had God scratching his head. I cannot believe he just said that to his wife. Am I the only one? Come on, man. Because I had a moment like that just two weeks ago. I'm like, why did I say that? And God's like, why did you say that to her? Come on, Rodney, be honest. Like, you, you've done that. Just kidding. We've done stuff, right, that probably amazed God, but stupid stuff. When I was in high school, I, I followed a bunch of friends to go jumping off bridges into rivers. I'm like, God's probably in heaven. Like, really, Scott? Like, I can't believe you just did that. How often, how often do we amaze God over our stupidity, or if I could say it this way, our defiance of his word? Because God has revealed to us, how do, how do I grow my faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why Jamie encouraged you to get into God's word. How do I grow legendary faith? By hearing the word and by reading God's word. When you read the word and when you hear the word, you know what God has said. And so often as men, we get belligerent and defiant in our lives. And the fleshly nature rises up in us and we do things that probably have God scratching his head in, in heaven. But, but how often, men, do we exercise the kind of faith that amazes our God? How often... Do we stand before the God of heaven and we say the words of the centurion, God, just say the word and my friend will be healed. How often do we come to the altar before the Lord and say, God, I am broken right now. I don't even know what to do with this problem. I've, I've been battling this sin for so long. 
And I'm going to stand before you at this altar today, today, God, and say, God, just say the word. Just release your word over me today, God. I don't know how you made the stars. I don't know how you created the angels. But God, I know that your word is powerful. And from this day forward, April 22nd, 2023, I'm going to start to have a very high view of God and his power and his authority over my life. And I'm going to say to God, God, just say the word over me. God, just speak your word over my life. And I'm going to believe that whatever addiction is in my life, God, you can break the back of that addiction by blinking your eye, by speaking the word over my life. Maybe the Spirit of God is moving right now in your heart. Maybe the Spirit of God is, is drawing your attention. Sometimes when we, when we feel the Spirit, I know what I felt 21 years ago. And maybe you feel this right now. I felt like there was a 100-pound weight sitting on my soul. And maybe there's just one of you that feels that. But, but you know how, how do you describe conviction? It's when there's like a 100-pound weight resting on top of your soul. Like on the inside, your heart, your, your inner man, there's like a weight resting on that inner man. What is that weight? It's not condemnation. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And it's the Spirit of God in this room right now trying to bring your attention to something in your life, whether it's something that you need to turn from or something that God wants you to turn to. God is speaking to some of you right now. In fact, if I can get the worship team to come back to the stage or maybe just the, the keyboard, thank you. Um, we're gonna go into a time just of responding to God's word. I'd like you to stand to your feet this morning. All of you, not just some of you, thank you. You might, you might be here today. Maybe you're here because a friend invited you. Maybe somebody bribed you with lunch afterwards or I'll buy you steak dinner. Maybe you're here for a, n a number of reasons. Some of you are veteran believers. Some of you here, you've been, in, you've been walking with Christ for many, many years. And you're here because you just want to be exhorted and built up and enjoy the fellowship of this kind of moment. But some of you in this room maybe haven't yet even taken the first step of faith. You came at the invitation of a friend. You're like, yeah, I'll go. There's breakfast, whatever. I got nothing going on. My kids don't have a game today, whatever. But you haven't yet taken the very first step of faith. You're on the, you're kind of like how I would maybe describe, you're on the outside looking in. All this, the worship, these music, like they got drums at a church. Like I don't, any of this doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not sure I've even taken the first step with God. And for you, what, what will April 22nd, 2023 mean? This, will, this day, maybe for even just one of you, this day forever will live in your heart and your mind, become legendary, because this is the day that your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Bible says that when we confess our sins and believe in our heart, we are saved and God puts your name in heaven. And I want to give you that chance right now on this Saturday morning. You just bow your heads for one second. Close your eyes, everybody in this room. If you're here today, man, even if it's just for one of you, God would have gone through all of this just for one of you to have the eternal destiny of your life forever, forever, forever changed. And if you're in this room today and you, you would say, Scott, I have not yet taken my first step with God. I believe, I believe there's a God. I believe this whole thing about Jesus, but I've never, I don't remember when I specifically decided to place my faith in Jesus Christ. I've never for the first time confessed my sins and trusted that what Jesus did on the cross was the sufficient payment for me to be forgiven. And if that's you in this room, when I I'll count to three, I want you to slip your hand up. Say, Scott, it's me. One, two, three. Oh man, all over this room I see hands. Thank you, man. 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 God, you're moving in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody else, you wish you had put your hand up, but you didn't. You want to take your first step with God today on this day, April 22nd. You maybe, maybe, put your hands down, maybe one more, keep your, maybe this is from the Lord, I don't know if it is, but eyes bowed, eyes closed, heads bowed real quick. Maybe you've been in church for a long time and you feel like you've been an imposter. 
and you know that you've never truly made a decision to place saving faith in Jesus, I just want you to maybe look up at me and nod or something. I'm not going to embarrass you. I don't want you to feel awkward about this, but thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Just give me a glance. Say, you know, thank you. Anybody else? It's me, Scott. It's me. I've been coming to church. I've been in the church for many years, but I've, I haven't. Thank you, sir. I want to lead us in a prayer today. I want every man in this church to pray with me. If you've believed on Jesus as the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me. And I believe something's going to happen, something supernatural. God's going to convert your soul. Say these words with me. Dear Jesus, I'm asking you right now to do what no one else can do. On April 22nd, 2023, I commit my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that he died on a cross and I confess with my mouth that he rose again as the sufficient payment for my sin. And on this day, I receive Jesus as the Lord of my life. In his name I pray. Amen. Man, can we celebrate what God has done today? Come on. Man, I don't know. I don't, uh, it's not even, I don't know. I know that there's nothing that could have a greater eternal significance than what you just decided in your heart. So what saves you? Well, the prayer, yes, confess with your mouth, Jesus, Lord, but what happened here in this morning for about 12 of you was a, a transaction of the heart. You decided that no longer will I live for myself, but I'm going to live for the one who can speak a word over my life and release heaven over my family, release heaven over my career, release the supernatural over everything that I say and do in my life, and that from this day forward, I'm going to walk with a holy anointing on my life, a holy boldness in my life. I'm going to walk into the workplace, when I walk down the street, when I walk into the grocery store, I'm going to walk with an air of significance, not because I'm anything, but because the God of the universe has taken up residence inside of me, and He indwells you by His Spirit. I have one more call on this Saturday morning. As these musicians play, maybe we'll go into a song if you have a song that we can sing. As they begin a song, I want to ask you if, if there's an area in your life right now, whether it's a personal struggle, whether it's your family this morning, maybe it's your marriage. There's some marriages in our church right now that I've been believing God for. Maybe your marriage is in a, in a, a place that you don't want it to be. Maybe you're, you're waiting for a breakthrough in your body, a physical healing. Maybe there's something you need in your career. Maybe you need direction from the Lord. God can release direction in your life this morning. And we're going to go into a song right here. As we worship, as we sing, I want you to step out of your seat. I want you to come forward. And your walking to this altar is a sign between you and God that you're saying to the Lord, God, say the word. God, I ask you to release the word over my life today. God, speak a word over me today. And I believe that God is going to move in some of your hearts today. God's going to reveal himself to you. He's going to release something in your life that you will never, ever, ever forget because it will become legendary in your life. And the impact of this moment will outlive the time of this moment. And God wants to grow in your life legendary faith. Let's worship God together today. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. God's in this place, man. God is here. God is here by His Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, look at me, man. Look at me. I know we have a full day and we've got to move uh, into the next uh, segment of what's planned here today. Jamie's going to come back in a moment and kind of release you into the next place. But I want to, I want to pray something over you this morning. And, and I want to say this. If, if God has done something in your life, please tell someone. If you feel God has spoken to your heart, He's released something in your life, or you have felt God speak a word over you, I want you to tell the pastor you came with, 
If you gave your heart to Jesus, if you, if you took your very first step of faith today and, and committed your life to Christ, you need to tell your pastor today. Or maybe this church, they've got some, some systems that you can get involved in, you can get some information. But don't stop today. This is just the beginning for you. It's just the beginning of a brand new life of following the God of this universe in the person of Jesus. And he's put his spirit inside of you to, to equip you to do that. But I want to pray over you today. I want you to put your hands out one more time, just the same way we started this message. I want to wrap this message up, just in a, in a place of receptivity, in a place of saying, God, I'm not, I'm not finished. You're not, because you're not finished. And God, I'm still open. I'm, I'm leaning in, God. I will listen with a bias to receive today. In every lesson, in every session that I listen in, God, I'm going to listen with a bias to receive something from the living God in this place. God, I pray over these men today, God. I thank you, God, for every single man that has come out on this Saturday morning. God, I thank you for the 80-year-old, and I thank you for the 18-year-old, and everyone in between, God. Thank you, Lord, that you stirred their hearts to come and to position themselves into the presence of the living God, and that they would avail themselves to you, O oh God, to speak your word over them today, God. And I pray that this day would mark eternity for some of them. That they would now birth, that something would be birthed in their heart, God. And that by faith they would be living out the words of the centurion. But say the word, God. But say the word, God. But say the word over my life. And it will be done as you said it would be done. And now, God, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would seal what you began in these hearts. Because your word never fails, and your word says you are faithful to complete that which you started in us today. So, God, I pray that you would now carry out into completion, be it in a day or a year or a decade, would you bring to completion that which you started today. In Jesus' name I pray. And the men of God in this room said amen, amen. and amen and amen. amen. God bless you, men. God bless you, men. The Mentor Guy's final thought. What a powerful message Scott brought. And like I said, we had 12 men accept Christ that day. And we had over 100 men just respond at the altar as they just responded to the challenge that he gave them to live a life of legendary faith. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. I just want to remind you to visit MantorMysteries.com. You can see all the session videos from all the Mantors this year is available there for free. You can check out all of our books and resources. And also like us on Facebook so you're up to date with all the conference information as it comes out for 2024. We already picked our theme. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but we're excited about it. It's going to be an amazing, amazing year next year as well. But guys, like I said, visit MantorMysteries.com for more information and all that. And we'll see you next time on the Mantor Guy Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMysteries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences. Are you looking for legendary truth that makes a legendary man? Well, it's time to mount up and take part in this year-long Bible reading plan for Mantor Ministries that is designed to help you become a strong, on-fire, legendary man of God. The Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan features 52 devotionals on fundamental truths, six days of Bible reading, and a devotional on the seventh day. It has relevant topics for men to aid in spiritual growth as we look at the legendary truths all men of God need to know. Every week there's a weekly memory verse and we have hand-selected Bible passages to keep you engaged all year. So it's time to saddle up and become a legendary man of God. For more information on the Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan, you can visit mantorministries.com slash Bible Plan where you can either sign up to receive the free email version or you can purchase your paperback copy of Ride or Die the Daily Bible Plan. Guys, take advantage of this as we head into 2023 and become a man of the word. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.